Yo, you good, bro? Drew, you okay, man? Yeah. You sure, man? I can pull over if you need me to. Nah, I'm good, bro. Crazy dream. It looks so different out here. It's not that different at all, man. I mean, we got some new houses and new schools, but that's pretty much it, bro. It's good to have you back home. And in one piece, man. Drew, we was worried about you for a few days, man. I was worried for a few days. It's only by the grace of God that I'm still here. You all got that crazy out there? Yeah, it got pretty crazy. How come you never said anything, man? I didn't want Pops to stress too much, so I kept some up to myself. We can talk about this later. <laughs> man, I'm home. Yeah, you home. And we definitely gonna finish this conversation later. I ain't letting you off the hook that easy, bro. All right. Anyway, man. Pops made a special dinner for you. Yeah, buddy. So let's go be a family. Let's go be a family. Son. Are we done hugging yet? Because I'm hungry. <laughs> appreciate all of this. I haven't seen a meal like this in almost a year. Baby boy, it is my pleasure. I'm just glad to see you back home again. Yeah, it's good to have you back, Drew. We really missed you. Well, I miss you all too. I hope you're here for a while. You don't have to leave right away, do you? No, actually I don't have to leave again. I got what they call an honorable discharge. What does honorable discharge mean? Well, in this case it means I did a great job. But, unfortunately, I got hurt, so I get to come home early. How did you get hurt? See, this is why we need a kid's table. <laughs> <laughs> Let the boy breathe before we get into all this heavy stuff. I'm sorry, Drew. No, it's, it's okay, Kiki. So, what you been up to? What did I miss? You missed everything. I joined Girl Scouts a few months ago, and already I've sold more cookies than any other girl in the entire district. Yeah, that's because you got mom to wrap all of her coworkers to buy those cookies. Mom did all the work. I still helped. Wait, what cookies did you sold? <laughs> anyway, haters gonna hate. Yeah. Right, so, Jordan, what you been up to? I joined the dance team at school. <laughs> you said dance team. You joined a dance team? I didn't even know you had rhythm. Exactly. <laughs> I've been taking dance classes. Yeah, we went to uh, one of its talent shows. The boy's pretty good. Go ahead. Show your cousin some of those moves. Right now? Right now. If you don't dance, you don't eat. <laughs> Do that one where you pump your fist in the air, like this. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's not it. Do the, do the whole thing. Go ahead, Usher. Do the whole thing. If I don't have any music. Uh, Theo. Yes, sir. Get a boy a beat. Something funky. All right. Coming right up. <laughs> Oh, I gotta see this. Come on, Jordan! 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 Okay, Jordan! Okay. Jordan! ready, everyone. Can I help you with that, Auntie? Can you go grab the rest of the food out of the kitchen, then? Thank you. As usual, sis. Everything looks delicious. Thank you. Everyone, grab a hand. Father God, creator of the heavens and earth, 
first and foremost, thank you for bringing my son home safe and in one piece. And thank you for his brothers in arms who had his back in some very dangerous places. Thank you for the brave men and women who continue to protect our country. Thank you for family and, and friends who are always there when you need them the most. And thank you for this wonderful food that my sister was so gracious in preparing. Bless it so that it does our bodies good. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. What are we waiting for? Dig in. Yeah. <laughs> Nice try, officer. You trying to go again? Nah, thanks. Uh, I've schooled you enough for today, I think. More like been schooled enough for today. <laughs> Let me give you a hand. <sighs> you alright? Yeah, perfect. Ever better. Stay in school, say no to drugs. <laughs> Don't do drugs? Very original. How are we supposed to look like cool police officers if you're out here falling down all over the place? I'm just trying to interact with the community. Looks like you're trying to interact with the pavement. Jokes. I can't with the jokes. You know, I have to take a few spells out there, but I'm gonna get to know as many people in this neighborhood as I can. I get it. I get what you're trying to do. But you don't want to look like you're trying. Does it look like I'm trying too hard? A little bit. However, it's good to try hard. But you don't want to look like you're trying too hard. <sighs> I'm confused. That's all right, kid. You're still new on the job. You'll pick it up. Here you go. Have a coffee. Yeah, we can try to follow the rest. We can try to follow the rest. All right, all right. Hey! Hey, everybody! How are you, sir? Good to see you. Oh. How are you? Look who the cat dragged in. Hey, long time no see. Hi, Mitchell. Hi, Mitchell. How are you doing? How are you? It feels good to be back on American soil. Oh, man. Yes, it does. Hey, welcome home, kid. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Gentlemen, enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, now that you're back and you have all the time in the world, what are you going to do with yourself? I have a couple of things that I'm working on. I'm looking forward to getting back to the after school program and another little something me and the guys have been working on. And the girl. I help too. <laughs> What's this little something y'all talking about? Are we allowed to talk about it? I haven't really told anybody yet. No time like the present, bro. True. Well, we're looking to expand the after school program. We've been trying to get a grant so we can open up our own facility and get some new equipment. When did you find time to chase grants? <laughs> well, when we weren't out chasing bad guys, I had some downtime. But Tracy and Christopher, they, they've been spearheading the whole thing. Are you planning on keeping it in this neighborhood? Oh yeah, absolutely. We want to focus all of our efforts right here in this area because we believe if you can change the community, you can change the city. That's, right. That's brilliant! How am I just not hearing about this? <laughs> Pops is still kind of new and we're working out the kinks, but you know, this is the direction that we're heading. That's good, man. I'm happy for you. It's good to come home with the purpose already laid out. Yeah. That's a blessing. I mean, when I came back from deployment, it took me almost a year before I found something productive. Oh, come on, Pops. You know I got my brother's back. You know I ain't gonna let you come home with nothing to do, man. <laughs> I'm happy for you guys. I'm happy for all of you. Thanks, Pops. Thanks, Pops. You guys may just make something of yourselves after all. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Sidebar. Where's the cake? 
I can smell it. I just can't see it. It is right here. Come on and help yourself. Look at God. Won't he do it? Yes, he will! <laughs> what do you think they see? When they see us patrolling the neighborhood. Well, when they see me, they see a ruggedly handsome man of the law. Nah, that's, that's not what I mean. I'm just messing with you. I know what you mean. You're talking about perception. Yeah. Well, we're two white police officers patrolling a predominantly black neighborhood. Neither of us actually lives in this neighborhood. You live a bit closer than I do, but neither of us actually lives here. We don't have any friends. We don't have any family here. But yet we're here. Every single day. How do you think we're perceived? Watch you. Hopefully, we're perceived as the good guys, right? Hopefully it's the good guys, huh? Why the good guys? I mean, come on. We're cops. Good guys. Are you one of the good guys, Officer Tyler? See that? You hesitated. Never hesitate. You have to know. Are you one of the good guys, yes or no? Yes. Yes, I'm one of the good guys. Listen, stop worrying about perceptions. If you let the streets dictate who you are, you'd be torn to shreds out of here. You need to know who you are from the get-go. Focus on staying one of the good guys. And don't think just because you're wearing that uniform, you're automatically one of the good guys. If you were a scumbag before you put that on, it's a good chance you're still a scumbag. I wasn't a scumbag before. I'm certainly not a scumbag now. You know what I think? How long have you been on the force? 20 years. I'm no spring chicken. Yeah, well, it's starting to show. What do you mean by that? Give us the money. Nobody gets hurt. Robbery in progress. 4102 West Gellin. 1108 in route. Throw your weapon down and get on your knees! Drop your weapon and get on your knees! Purpose entered the Bend building, following on foot, 14th Street North. some good news. Is it about the grant? You know it. So my dad, he called in this favor from one of his friends, this super rich tech shark he used to do business with a few years ago. He, he told him about what we're trying to do and he got us a meeting with him on Monday. He wants to hear about us, the kids, the after school program, the whole deal. Dude, are you for real? Seriously, this is for real. It looks like Drew came home at the perfect time. Yo, he's gonna go bananas. This is perfect timing. Are we prepared for a meeting, Chris? If not, we better get prepared. And keep in mind, these rich guys, they need tax write -offs. Right, right. We may be helping out his business. We just have to tell him what we've been trying to do these past few years. We could do that, right? We can definitely do that. Yo, we know this thing inside out. Exactly. This should be a piece of cake. 
So what are you guys up to today? Um, we can head out. I'm taking uh, Drew to look for an apartment and a new car. I guess he must be anxious to get back out there. Yeah, man. It's like he went in there, boy, and he came out a man. He wants to get his own place. He wants to get a job. He wants to get a, a car. He wants to hit the ground running. I hear the military will do that to you. But listen, I'm only about 10 minutes away from you guys. I'll swing by, I'll scoop you up, and we can ride together. Sounds good. I'll let you tell them good news. I'll see you when you get here. All right. It's open. You about ready? I just have to jump in the shower. Take me five minutes. Cool. Yo, Chris is coming by. We're going to ride with him. Then we're going to head to the dealership first and then go grab a bite to eat. Cool. Sound like a plan. I really appreciate you guys taking care of me like this. Come on, bro. I told you we got you. And you should probably go get in the shower. You got this whole room smelling like cheese and gym socks. You stink, bro. Get out of here, man. I'm just trying to help you out, bro. I'm just trying to help you yeah. out. <laughs> there he is, the golden oh. boy. Golden boy. I know. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's too kind. You finally got a taste of what it's like to be out on the street. Yeah, yeah it was uh, it was pretty intense. Mm -hmm. I'm just glad I didn't flinch. Flinch yet. It can get pretty scary out there. But yesterday was a good test, though. Listen, flinching is the least of your worries, kid. Let me tell you something. I've seen grown men poop themselves first right. week on the job. Right. That's true. What you did out there, that took courage. Mm -hmm. And don't let anybody tell you anything <laughs> Okay, okay. This kid's head's big enough already. Calm down with the platitudes. We're gonna eat or we're gonna spend the rest of the day patting each other on the back? We gonna eat. Come on, man. You did good. Get him in his problem. Thank you. Yeah. Don't fill his head up too much. We got lucky out there the other day. That guy decided to run. It doesn't always play out like that. No, it sure don't. A good day can turn into a nightmare at the drop of a hat. Why are you trying to scare the guy? Hey, I'm just trying to give the kid an honest point of view. Hope for the best. But always be prepared for the worst. Always. always. Hey, well, Trace just texted me. I told him to meet us here because our boy Chris has some important news to share with the group. You got some good news? Yep. I do. But we gotta wait for Tracy because it concerns her too. Is it that important? It's that important. Yup, it's that important. Hey, y'all, I know about y'all, but I am hungry, man. Man, your default is hunger. Whatever. What? Well, I don't think I know another person who eats as much as you. Oh, yes, you do, our dad, man. He's like an elephant, bro. Yes, yeah, so okay, right. Hey, Grace, what's up? Hey, Grace. True. Welcome back. When did you get in? I just got in yesterday. So good to see you. How come you guys didn't tell me he was here? No, don't look at me. Don't. Anyway, <laughs> it's good to see you, too. So what you been up to while I was gone? Uh, finishing up high school, uh, applying and touring colleges. That's pretty much been my life. I, I guess it paid off, though. I got accepted into USF, the music and art program. Oh, congratulations, congratulations, Chris! That's Let great news. Go, Thank you. I really couldn't have done it without you guys and Tracy. The after-school program helped to keep me focused and out of trouble. Grace, you were already awesome. Now, we may have helped you channel all of that energy and effort, but as far as the elements of greatness, it was already there. Well, thanks, Theo. You are welcome. Now, let me get you guys his order before I'm out of a job. <laughs> <laughs> what can I get for you, Chris? I got a Coke with lots of ice. I want a vanilla shake, please. <laughs> just a glass of water for me. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll get those out to you in just a second. Give you a couple minutes to look over the menus. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Good, good seeing you, Grace. Good, good seeing you. That was pretty cool. Yeah, bro, it was. Hey, I got to ask you, who were those two older gentlemen at your party? I thought I knew everybody. Um, the man with the one leg was Tim Mitchell. Right. And the other gentleman was Hector Diaz. Right. And so what I did in the Gulf War. 
Tim lost his leg there. They're all in the same unit. Mm -hmm. How'd he lose it? RPG. The unit was pinned down in what they thought was a safe zone in the middle of a firefight with a group of insurgents. About a half an hour goes by and the firing slows just enough to take cover in the nearby building. Turns out it's a trap. Yeah. RPG comes flying through one of the windows and goes out just yards away from Tim. Rips his leg right off. Clean off. Hector and our dad managed for him to safety. They were all pretty banged up, but but Tim, Tim caught the worst of it. Mm -hmm. For real? For real. That is crazy. I know, bro. Man, that sounds like right out of Black Hawk Down or some Saving Private Ryan kind of yeah, stuff. I know. After hearing how dangerous it was, you still wanted to enlist? Well, at first, not really. But after 9-11, I felt I had to. I had to do something. And a part of me wanted to follow my dad's footsteps. Yeah. What about you, Theo? How come you never enlisted? Uh, simple answer, bro, because I don't want nobody shooting at me, man. <laughs> you already know, man. Hey, hey Tracy, what's up? What's up, Tracy? Come what's on up? in. Come so on in. Have a seat. Have a seat. Well, nothing yet. We just sat down. Am I the only one who doesn't know about this? Well, they haven't told me either. Okay, so yeah. spit it out. Yeah, come on. The suspense is killing me. You want to tell? Nah, bro. You got to drop that good news on them. So I told my dad about the after school program, right? Mm -hmm. And he tells one of his friends. Mm -hmm. That friend loves what we're doing. Uh -huh. And that friend also happens to be a multimillionaire and wants to meet with us on Monday. Oh! <laughs> Are you for real? This is yes, so crazy. Bro. This could change everything. Everything, man. Come here. No, come here. Hug I'm gonna give you a hug. hug no hug, man. This deserves a hug. I'm telling you. <laughs> no. You see a friend? 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 You I'm nervous. I think I look nervous. Do I look nervous? You look fine, stop stressing. When I get nervous, I get gassy. I think I'm gonna use the restroom before we the meeting. Are you okay? I'm just nervous, I gotta go to the restroom. Christopher? Mr. Townsend will see you now. Yes. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect, never better. Please take a seat. Mr. Thompson will be with you shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about tardiness. I had another meeting that ran a little bit late. You must be Kristen. That's me. It's nice to meet you, Mr. Townsend. Call me here. I'm Tracy. Nice to meet you, Tracy. I'm Drew. Strong handshake. I like that. I'm I'm Theo. Theo. I can't help but notice that you seem a bit perturbed. No, I I, I was just expecting someone. Someone older. Yeah, yeah, somebody older. It's okay. I take that as a compliment. I get it a lot. <laughs> so let's get down to business. I heard you all are working on something pretty special. Yes, we put together this really cool after-school program for inner-city kids, kids in our community. Right now, we focus on music and art and we're in desperate need of some new instruments and supplies. We'd also like to purchase a dedicated facility so we can broaden our efforts. And that's where you come in. I like what I'm hearing so far. You got five minutes. Break it down to me as if I was a five-year-old. Our after-school program is called Clear Path. As Drew mentioned, we're in desperate need of new instruments in our own facility. Right now, we're renting space from the school that many of the kids already attend, but what we'd like to do is create a fresh new environment for the kids we already work with and have something big enough to accommodate even more kids. How many kids do you have now, and uh, how many have completed so far? Right now, we have about 60 kids enrolled, ranging from ages 8 to 16. 
we've been in operation for about six years. And in that six years, 485 kids have graduated our program. You average 80 kids a year with such a small team? Yes, and I was deployed for about a year. And so the team was even smaller. And they still held it down. Impressive, to say the least. And you're a veteran, right? Yes, sir. Two years in total with one year of active duty. You're like the poster boy for everything <laughs> great about this country. Thank you, sir. But I don't want to make this about me. This is about the kids that we serve and how we can hopefully work together to continue to serve them. Well, honestly, you had me at hello. Chris, as soon as your dad told me about this, I wanted to be a part of it. A war veteran returning home to serve his community. It's perfect. I do have one concern, though. I don't know any of you. I don't know how committed you are to the success of the program or the kids. I hear what you're telling me, and it sounds great, but what connects you all to this? Why should I trust you for the next five to 10 years? Eric, I've spent the last six years of my life working in this program with children. I didn't know a thing about teaching kids. So I started taking classes on how to teach kids while I was teaching the kids. We started this program with just four instruments that were given to us by our mother who passed away a few years ago. I've personally invested at least $10,000 in new instruments, our supplies, and the upkeep of the facilities that we use. Tracy has written letter after letter to every grant issuing organization that you can think of. She's traveled the country trying to find grant money or someone to invest in our program. And she's doing all of this while teaching five vocal classes and pretty much running day-to-day -day operations. Chris has been here since day one. We taught our first music class together. And he's structuring the curriculum in the way that our classes are now official college credits. But it was my brother, Drew, who started it all. It was his idea to offer our talents to the community. He was away for one year on the battlefield, and while he was away, he was donating his entire salary to this program. We're married to this. But we've gone as far as we can go with our knowledge and resources. We need your help to be able to offer more classes to more students, reach more people. We need you, Eric. You are the missing piece, sir. We gotta celebrate, this is bananas. Did you have that speech written? You no, couldn't have man. come up with that on the fly? Right then and there, bro. Man, stop it, no you didn't. Honest truth, man, it was all the top of my head. Guys, I feel like a huge weight has been lifted. We, we gotta go celebrate, we, like, we this is celebrate. huge. Come on. So what do you think, Drew? You think we got it, man? I, I, I think we did it. I think we may have gotten it, bro. I think this is it, Drew. I think this is our big break we've been waiting for, man. This is more than what we've been waiting for. This is our big chance. We, we just may have it. I think we're getting pulled over. Did you run a stop sign, man? Make this next right, Drew. We don't need this, man. Are you aware you made an illegal turn back there? You're supposed to come to a complete stop at the sign. License and registration. Absolutely, give me a second. I, I got it, I got it. Y'all all right back there? Yes, ma'am. You too? Yeah, thanks. Sure? All right. 
Give me a second. I'll be right back. Man, what was that all about? I don't know, man. It looked like she was looking for something. Your license and registration is good, right? Yeah, always. You sure? Yeah. Mize are looking crazy, aren't they? <sighs> yeah. yeah. She's gonna think you're high. Or worse. Maybe we kidnapped her or something. Bro. Come on. Stop, stop playing around, all right? Don't, don't joke with her. Chill. Just, just make sure you put your hands on the stairwell when she comes back so she can see him. Please. His license and registration is all good, but something's up with that girl in the back seat. What do you mean? I mean, her eyes all bloodshot and she seems off, you know? And the guy sitting next to her is clutching the backpack like his life depended on it. I don't know. Maybe she just broke up with her boyfriend or something. Yeah, that could be it. Or maybe she just smoked a joint and the guy in the back seat has a bag of weed in his backpack. Really? Hey, it could happen. But you know what? The car that they're driving, it matches the description of the car that was stolen from Holland Park like a few weeks ago. And then the guy that's driving the car, that dude matched the description of the guy in question into the same robbery. You really are trying to make my day more difficult than it already is, aren't you? <laughs> Not at all. I just want you to make informed decisions. That's it. Well, thank you for that information. Hey, that's why I, I didn't get a bad vibe from him. I don't know, Christine. If we cut them loose and another officer pulls them over only to find out that she's actually high, man, we'll be looking straight crazy out here. So I say just to be safe, do a quick search of the car just to make sure. And while you at it, tell the driver that he may want to consider growing his hair out and selling that piece of crap. It's the you. Yeah. Go check the vehicle. Man, what's taking him so long? Relax. She's coming back now. She's coming back. Everybody just... Sir, do you have any drugs or weapons in your car? Um, no ma'am, I don't. I don't no, do drugs and I don't own any weapons. Good. So, do you mind if I do a quick search? Excuse me, ma'am? Officer? We're not criminals or anything. There's no reason for you to search our vehicle. Can you just give us a ticket or whatever and let us go? This only take a minute. The quicker we do this, the quicker we can all go home, right? Right. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm, I'm not trying to be difficult, but why do we have to get out of the car? Can, can you just give us a ticket and let us go? This doesn't feel good. I feel like I'm being profiled. Profiling? <laughs> Ain't nobody profiling you, brother. I just want to do a random search. That's it. Well, I'm sorry, ma'am, but I'm not giving you permission to search my car. Drew. You're going to have to get a warrant and, and let us be on our way because we didn't do anything. Drew, just give her permission to check the car so we can be done with this, man. Honestly, sir, if I had probable cause, I don't need your permission to search the car. I can command you to get out of the car, and if you didn't get out of the car, I can open the door, smash the window, and pull you out of the car. Don't get it twisted. All I was going to do was a random search, but you done ticked me off. You need to stop looking at every cop thinking everybody's out to get you. You are not that important. Do you hear me? to be me to walk around these streets wearing this uniform. You couldn't walk a day in my shoes. You think about that next time you try to be tough in front of your friends. Okay, you know what? Drew. You're right. I'm sorry because look at me. Take a real good look because why would I have any clue what it's like for people to judge me based on my exterior? Why would I know what it's like to drive down the street and feel targeted because of the way that I look? Drew. You're right. You're 100% right. Why, why, why the heck would I know what that's like? Drew. You need to drive off, son. You need to just drive off. Just drive off, okay? Uh, what just happened out there? Okay, are you gonna tell me what happened or will I have to write a report? I lost my temper, all right? 
you lost your temper. Christine, you look like a maniac out there. Every ugly thing people say about police officers, you just did it. That kid just stepped on every last nerve I had left. These people don't know how hard it is to be a black woman wearing this uniform trying to protect and serve. He couldn't walk a day in my shoes and he gonna talk to me like that? Yes, I know I lost control of the situation for a second, but we can't do that. Do what? We can't wear this badge, this uniform, and harass people like that. Christine, it's an abuse of power. Harass people? Abuse of power, really? Don't you think you're stretching this way out of proportion? No. And I think you need to watch how you talk to me. Watch how Watch I talk what to you, you say to me. Watch how yes. I talk to you. Listen, Christine. What if this was your daughter out there? And one of our police officers pulled her over and made her feel like a second-class citizen and had his hands all up in her face. Christine, how would you feel if it hits closer to home? got to think about that. Hey, you good, bro? Yeah, I'm good. No big deal. You sure, man? Yeah, that really rubbed me the wrong way. I get it, man. I was there. I saw what happened. Yeah, but that mess happens way too much. I'm an American citizen who fought for this country Whoa. and bled for this country, not to come home and deal with stuff like Yo, that. No, I get it, man. I get it. Bro, something's wrong with that picture. No, I get it. I agree with you 100%, all right? But I love you, Drew. And I don't want to see you get hemmed up over no traffic stop. Okay? Look, I know you're not a criminal, and you know you're not a criminal. But next time it happens, just, just, just don't fuss with them, Drew. Cooperate as much as possible. The goal is to get home safe, man. You feel me? I feel you, man. I feel you. You sure? Yeah. Come on, man. Let's go. I got a song to finish. I can't tell you how good it is to have you back home. And I don't just mean for the program. I mean to have my boy back on American soil. I can't tell you how good it is to be back on American soil. I'm coming from living in the desert for almost a year to this, you know, it's like heaven. You know, regardless of what happened earlier today, it's you know, still 100 times better than, than dodging bullets in 125 degree weather. So what was it like to be away for so long? It was rough. You're always on edge, always tense, always looking over your shoulder. Even being on the base can be pretty scary. You can hear bombs going off just a few miles away from where you sleep. And the worst part about it is being away from my friends and family for so long. And you knowing you can never get that time back. After I got shot, it made it even more real. I knew I had to come back home. I felt like I was knocking on heaven's door. I made some great friends while I was there, though. So leaving was bittersweet. Wow. Way to bring everybody down, bro. Look, man, I'm over here trying to gobble up this good food, and he's trying to make me cry. That's not a good look, bro. I can't be over here crying with a mouthful of food. Look, ah. Uh... <laughs> Come on, man. But you know what is a good look? What? This. All of us coming together to make something awesome. What are you thinking, Theo? I can see the wheels are turning. I'm thinking expansion, Trace. Look, up until now, right, we've only been able to teach art and music. But once we get this grant, we'll be able to offer more classes. Like what? What are you thinking? Look, I'm thinking we could bring on some new instructors, add a math class, an English class, even a dance class. That sounds good. Man, I'm down with that, too. And if we're going to offer hip hop, man, I got it covered. There is no reason to look for an instructor. Huh? What? Not trying to be petty or anything, but I have never seen you dance. Just because you've never seen it doesn't mean I can't do it. <laughs> Back in my younger days, people used to compare me to Justin Timberlake. Which Justin Timberlake? Hold up, time out. Boy band Justin Timberlake or solo career Justin Timberlake? Bye, bye, bye <laughs> was my jam. I'm talking about MTV Award Solo Justin. 
Like jumping out of that big boom box and coming out on stage, killing it with them dope dance moves. I saw him get down. The man got moves. 100, bro? 100. I'm just saying, the man can get down. All right. I got to see this. Let me see what you got. All right. Show us some moves. I got moves. Check this two-step. Uh, so Mr. Justin moves. Timberlake. Show. Watch. Middle Tell, the floor, they go Tell him. Go ahead. All right. Let's see. Look, he got shot too. I knew you couldn't dance. Y'all want some of this piece, man? Y'all want some of this? Yeah, let me get one. All right, come on, let's do it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You ever see this much money in one place? Never. On my salary, could probably make this in 10 years, though. If I can get shot first. Whoa, you better watch your mouth. Don't even put that type of negative energy out there. Life and death and the power of the tongue, my friend. You're in the wrong field. Should have been a preacher. Oh, right where I'm supposed to be. Hey, um, we got everything bagged and tagged in there. You all covered out here? We're almost done. Dustin Lamar uh, should be here any minute now to pick this all up and bring it back to the station. What's up, Tyler? <laughs> you think about that big old mansion you can buy with all this dirty money, huh? Nah, oh. <laughs> not at all. I'm just glad we're getting this off the street. I'm sure we ruined some drug dealer's day. I wish. The way they dashed out of here, this money wasn't that important. Probably only took them a few days to accumulate it. Copy. We're gonna take this. You guys be careful, we're right behind you. Yeah, I should be home around 5. Yeah, give me a call then there, okay? Thanks, bye. Drew. Drew! Are you okay? Yes, sir. I'm doing good. I was just happy to be here. Have you told anyone? Told anyone what? Son, you're not fooling me. I've seen the look on your face before. You're having flashbacks. PTSD? Now, have you told anyone? It's nothing, and I don't want to burden anyone with some, some bad memories. It'll go away. No, no, Drew, that is not the way it works. Listen, I... I've been retired in fact over two decades and I still have flashbacks. Yeah, you're sitting in my living room, beautiful day and all of a sudden some neighborhood kid lights off a pack of firecrackers and boom, I'm right back in the heat of the war zone, fighting for my life, yelling, screaming. Ugh. But in reality, I'm still sitting in that chair in my living room. Man, it's so real. I can't even smell the gunpowder. Now, now, you gotta get some help. You gotta talk to someone. I don't even know where to begin to look for help. I get it, 100%. When I first came back, I was right where you are right now. I had the weight of the war sitting on my shoulders. Nobody had any answers, nobody. I was so lost. Lost my wife. Almost lost my children. It's more than one person can bear. What am I supposed to do? I got you six. I'll walk you through it, okay? Yes, sir.
Are you all right? My dad hit my mom! All right, secure the kid. Don't move until backup arrives. Shots fired! Shots fired! 648 Westbrook Avenue. We need backup immediately. Two shots were fired before Officer Suzuki went in. He went in alone? Yeah, he went in solo. Officer Burns to secure the back exit. And Tyler stayed with the kid. Call EMT and back up. Now, as far as private investigator shows go, Magnum P.I. was by far the best. Ah! He had your action and suspense. He had laughs. And the best part was that fantastic mustache he sported. Now, if you ask me, the mustache was a little overrated. Yeah, it kind of looked like he had a caterpillar attached to his face. <laughs> <laughs> In actuality, Starsky and Hutch was a much better show than Magnum P.I. No, come on, no, really, seriously. Name me a duo that was better than Starsky and Hutch. Go ahead. Can't do it, huh? <laughs> Tubbs and Crockett, Miami Vice. Miami Vice? Absolutely. Oh, get it. Miami Vice was an iconic series. People tend to focus on the flashy suits and fancy cars, but under that was a serious crime drama. And a lot of what was going on in the show was just a reflection of what was happening in the city. I couldn't see anything with a reflection off those bright colored suits they wore with <laughs> pastel shirts. Now, come on, you tell me. What self-respecting detective is gonna wear pastel shirts? Hey, ask the kid, see what he thinks. What would he know about them old shows? These kids love 80s pop culture. Son, tell him. Magnum P.I., Starsky and Hutch, Miami Vice. Which was the best? What did I just walk into? Boy, just answer the question. Okay, um... Knight Rider. That was my favorite. <laughs> the one with the talking car? These kids don't know anything about anything. Go stand over there in the corner. <laughs> Grown folks are talking. So where you boys headed today? We headed to the community center for a few hours, Pops. Good. Kids will be happy to see you back home. Yeah, it's been a while. I'm looking forward to seeing them. So, you guys gonna tell me what happened the other day? Yo, little run-in with the police? It was nothing, Pops. 
Some things were said, things got heated, you know, she let it go with a warning. You do realize withholding the truth is much different from lying, right? Okay, so let's try this again. What happened the other day? All right. I may have missed the stop sign. You know, I don't think I did, but the officer pulled us over. You know, she looks in the car at Tracy and just assumes we're up to no good. She takes my license to go back to her patrol car. And when she comes back, she tells me she wants us to get out the car so she can search it. Makes no sense, but go on. Yeah, it didn't feel right. And I told the officer that. I told her that I felt like I was being profiled and that she didn't have a warrant. She couldn't search my car. That probably didn't go over very well. It didn't. She said that if she wanted to, she could bust out my windows, pull me out the car, and search it anyway. Son, listen to me. I'm always going to be on your side, no matter what. But you can't argue with the person who has a badge and a gun. You're not going to win that argument. And for heaven's sakes, keep you cool. You can't be out here getting in a shouting match with law enforcement. Focus on not getting locked up and getting home safe. Yeah, but Pop, but come on, Pop's she was- nothing. Not getting locked up and getting home safe. That's it. <sighs> Theo told me your meeting went well. Good. I'm proud of you two. Come here. You know, you get your hard headedness from your mother. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Are we done hugging? We're going to be late. Yeah, we got to head out. All right, you guys have a good day. See you, Mr. Mitchell. See you, Mr. Hector. Hi, right, Pops. Be safe. Welcome back. Oh, thanks. It's good to be back. So, when did you get back? I just got back a few days ago. I've been taking some time to unwind and hang with the family. Oh, yeah, I definitely feel you on that. I bet your dad is ecstatic to have you back. He is. They threw a party for him. It was pretty cool. Uh, where was my invite? Hey, dad did the invites. It's not my fault. <laughs> mm hmm. Anyway, so are you back for good or is this like a visit? No, I'm back. I just came by today to say hi to everyone and give Theo a hand with his class. I'm going to take a few more days off before I jump back in. Awesome. Okay, you know we have to stop by and see Kimberly, okay? She's been asking for you almost every day. Absolutely. I got a gift for her. She's going to be so excited. But um, anyway, holler at me when you're done, okay? I will. All right. All right. See you later. <laughs> yes, see you later. All right. All right, guys. Catch you later. See you. Yes, I'm going to come back in a few days. A few days? In just a few days, I'll be back. Let the man breathe. He just got back. Yes, stop crowding the man. You guys go back to your seats. These kids have been asking and asking for you. I've been asking about them too. How's your class going? Art supplies are still low, but aside from that, all is well. It's good to see you, Drew. Thank you. I'm going to go holler at Christmas class real quick. Okay. See you later. Then. See you later, Kevin. Hey! Hey! Give me my hug. What are you doing here? I thought you were going to wait a few more days before you came back in. Well, actually, that's kind of my fault. I uh, begged him to come in and help out with my class today. Oh, what are you teaching today? We're going to be doing some Ray Charles and Rock Man and all. You know, blues in class school, mixed in one class. Okay, sounds like it's going to be an interesting day. You know it. That's why he dragged me in. Oh, whatever, man. <laughs> Make sure you stop by and say hi to Kimberly before you leave, okay? Yeah, they're right now. What's up, Chris? Oh, thought I heard y'all in the building. Oh, man. I'm looking at that Ah, Good to see you, bro. What's going on? I was just stopping by to say hello to everyone and give you a hand with his class. Have you heard anything from Eric about the grant yet? No, nothing yet. I hope we're something quick, though. Yeah. We had to cancel the percussion class because the drums were so old and beat up. They didn't even sound right anymore. Listen, guys, it's going to happen. The grant is going to come through and everything is going to work itself out. I just, I just hope it's sooner rather than later. Yeah. 
Mr. Drew! <laughs> so good to see you. Are you back for good? Yes, I'm back for good. I got a gift for you. Really? This is for you. What is it? <laughs> it's a surprise. I hope when you get home. Thank you, Mr. Drew. Can I ask you something, Mr. Drew? You can ask me anything. Some of the kids have been saying that we won't be able to come back to the after-school program anymore, that it's going to be closing soon. Is that true? We're not going to let that happen. We're not going to close. We're going to find a way to keep those doors open. You promise? Thank you, promise. Hello, Honor Brothers Repair. This is Daniel Thomas. How may I be of service? Aside from being talented kids, uh, they are a great asset to this community. Ooh, they've been working at the community center for years, investing their time and money into it. Absolutely. If you need more information from me, please feel free to call. Who is that? Everything okay? People about the grant, mm. doing their due diligence on the boys. I I guess they put me down as a reference or something. <laughs> Tell you what, them, <laughs> them boys are gonna make something of themselves. Are you surprised? You raised those boys well. Not surprised. I'm just happy to see that they found a purpose. You know, I wish their mom was still with us. All that musical ability, they get it from her. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be so proud of them. Breathing is very important for good vocal expression. Controlling how you release your breath can enhance the delivery of each note. And, as you may have guessed, we will be focusing on breathing next week. So here's an exercise I want you guys to practice when you go home. You want to stand up so your tummy is fully extended. And then you want to take a deep breath and hold it before you release your notes, like this. La 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 la. <laughs> all right, that's all the time we have for today. I'll see you guys next week. Practice your vocal exercises and try not to stress your vocal cords. Okay? Okay. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Hey, we're gonna grab some grub. You wanna roll with us? Sure. Give me five minutes. Oh, cool. Here's our front. It was so easy. I just sort of fell into it. I would tell the doctor that I had back pains and he would write me a prescription. No questions asked. This went on for about three years and I wasn't buying drugs in some back alley. He didn't look like what I thought a drug dealer looked like. He wore a lab coat and a tie. But he was my drug dealer and I was his faithful customer. A functioning addict with a husband and two children. I look back on that time and it terrifies me. If it weren't for the grace of God, I don't know where my life would be right now. I'm thankful. Thankful that I'm here now and not there anymore. Thank you for sharing with us, Marilyn. We're thankful to have you here with us as well. What's next? What about you, Christopher? Would you like to share with us? Um, sure. Yeah, things are going really good. I'm going on seven years clean now. No pills or alcohol. Seven years. When I started this journey, I didn't think it was possible. I couldn't see anything past the addiction. I'd been a slave to pills for so long that I'd forgotten what it was like to be free. You all have inspired me so much. You all believed in me when I didn't believe in me. Marilyn, I vividly remember you calling to check on me, May 10th, 2012. I almost relapsed that day. You called to say hello, stayed on the phone with me for hours. That phone call probably saved my life. That's why having a support system like this is so important. But you have to recognize that you need help. 
And with that comes change. What are some of the changes that you had to make in order to be where you are right now today? Aside from connecting with this group, I would say changing my environment and keeping my hands busy. I had to get out of my old neighborhood and my old way of thinking. I lost a few friends along the way, but I gained some new ones. Tell us about your new friends and your new environment. My new friends, fellow musicians, it helped me stay focused on what's really important. And my new environment is this after school program for inner city kids. I teach bass and drums. I've been doing that for about five, six years. It's given me a purpose. I'm involved in something that is way bigger than me. Something that touches others' lives in a positive way. And I didn't have that before. It's valuable. It really helps me keep things in perspective. Hey, what are y'all doing here? We're here to take you to lunch, come on. You're paying though. <laughs> we'll bring you back to your car. <laughs> the door's open, bro. Cool. So how's it going, man? How did everything go? What's up? What's up? It's good. Doing really good today. We're just sharing the highs and lows of the journey. Oh, nice. That's good. That's good. Talk nice. a little bit about the after school program. Yeah. yeah. Talk yeah. a little bit about y'all as well. Yeah. You talk about, about us? What you talking about us, man? Just told him a little bit about Manya. <laughs> <laughs> really? Manya business? Oh, man. Very funny. I came out of there with jokes. Yo, you got you, Trace. You got you good, Trace. Where are we going? I don't know. I am so hungry right now. I don't know. What y'all want to do? What y'all want to do? New vegan place in Ebor. Let's try that. Come on, Trace. Hold on. You mean vegan? Like, is it no meat, Trace? Yeah, really? Vegan, oh as in you guys always pick where we eat, so now it's my turn to pick. Oh, come on, Trace. Trace. Uh, 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 I don't want to hear it. Okay. How big he is. Prepare yourselves for veggie burgers and pizza. Wow. And you're gonna like it too. Veggie burger. Burger. Oh! Oh! A burger can't be a burger without meat. Right <laughs> no, man. Let's start the car, come on, I'm All hungry. Right, All right, listen, I'm just letting y'all know, you ain't got no seatbelts, you know what I'm saying? So you better hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all ready? Hold on, y'all, hold on. <laughs> wait, 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 that it. That Yo! That just happened to it again. Hold on, you, you wanna talk to him, you wanna talk to him? Listen here, babe. I want you to start. <laughs> Prove me right. Prove me right. I know. I believe you. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Let's get. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. My baby. This is my baby. Watch this. Oh! oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Now nah, talk about my car. Yeah. Yeah. We out. Keep hey talking. yo. Hold on, y'all. Lord help us, please. Lord help us, please. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Let's, go. We let's got do this. it. Doesn't that look like the vehicle that was parked stolen from Highland Park a few weeks ago? How do you remember this stuff? Being young has its benefits. Wise guy. There's no tag on the car, but I'm pretty sure this is the one. How do you want to do this? All right, I'm gonna let you take the lead on this one. Try not to alarm anyone. We just wanna make sure this is or isn't the vehicle that's reported stolen. We'll secure the driver first, then get everyone else out of the vehicle. Keep your eyes wide open and stay calm. Let's go. Good evening, sir. Would you mind stepping outside of the car? Stepping outside of the car for what, officer? We just need to speak with you. Officer, we didn't do anything wrong. We just finished teaching a group of kids from our after-school program. We're just trying to get something to eat. Just sit tight for a second, ma'am. Just step out of the car, and I'll tell you everything you need to know. Man, just, just do what he says, man. Let's get this over with. All right. Can you all step out of the car for me as well? I need you to sit up over here on the curb. Turn around for me, sir, and put your hands behind your back. Why do I have to put my hands behind my back? Can you tell me what's going on? This is I just didn't a do safety anything. precaution. If you did nothing, then you have nothing to worry about, right? Officer, can you please tell us what's going on? We have rights. We know you can't stop us for no reason. Sir, just sit there and be quiet for right now. The quicker you turn around, the quicker we can get you all out of here. 
All right, man. Your car has no tags. And it fits the description of a car that was whoa, stolen. Whoa, whoa, excuse me. Ago. Excuse that me, officer. That is why we stopped you. Is, my brother's brother's car is not stolen, man. It's... Get off! Please, you need to relax. Oh, listen. Listen to me. Listen to me. Officer my Tyler, brother, do you have the situation under control? Listen to me. My brother, he didn't steal his car. It's not stolen. Get off of me. What is he my doing, man? My brother just purchased his car. Man, we're not criminals. How's it cool to throw him on the you, pavement like that? I didn't ask for your opinion. Get off of me. I asked you to sit there. You can sit there, be calm, or you can be arrested. You... You heard me! You need to remain calm! You Sir, get back on the curb! Hello? Thomas Residence? Yes. This is his father. The boys are gonna be thrilled to hear this. Yeah. I wish I had more time to give back to my community, but what I lack in time, I hope I can make up for in donations. We're prepared to offer a full renovation of the current facility or the purchase of a new facility, whichever one, along with new instruments and, of course, future financial support. Well, we need them in as soon as they're available to finalize everything. This is exciting news. Uh, the boys should be home any minute now, and I'll have them uh, give you a call as soon as they get in. All righty, sir. It was a pleasure speaking with you. And you as well. Yes. Drew, this is your dad. I've been trying to reach you guys. Eric called and he wants to make a donation to the after school program. Call me right back. Tell me what happened. Oh, gosh, we got pulled over again. For some reason, they thought our car was stolen. Drew just bought that I car. I know, I know, Pops, but they said it fit the description of another vehicle that was stolen in the area that we was in. They asked us to get out of the car, Pops. Then another officer, he started to cuff me. And that's when it all went bad. They, they shot Drew. They shot Drew, Pops. They shot Drew, Dad. They shot Drew. They shot all of them. I can't help First thing I want you to know is I'm on your side. 
I'm here to help. But to help you, I'm gonna need the truth. Not someone else's version of the truth, not someone else's perspective of the truth, but exactly what happened out there and what you did. Son, you get one shot at this, you understand? I understand. Uh, Officer Eugene and I were doing what we normally do that time of day. I noticed a suspicious looking car, so we decided to investigate. Uh, the driver of the car also matched the description of a person that was wanted for questioning in relation to the stolen car. Um, we stopped the car. Uh, I got out of my patrol car and asked the driver of the other car to step out of his vehicle. Um, he asked why. He stepped out of his car um, um, his voice started to go up and uh, he became aggressive. I wrestled Mr. Thomas to the ground as he continued to be aggressive. Uh, a few seconds went by and I heard Officer Eugene yelling. I don't recall what he said. Um, this is when I noticed Drew Thomas rushing over towards me. He pulled out what appeared to be a weapon. I'm gonna stop you right there. There were no weapons found at the scene. No. I had six officers patrolling that place, no weapons. They didn't find any weapons. You know what they did find? A blood-stained cell phone belonging to Drew Thomas. I'm almost positive I saw a weapon. Is it possible that during the heat of the moment you mistook Mr. Thomas' cell phone as a weapon? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Who's the family of Drew Thomas? I'm Drew's brother. I'm Drew's father. What's going on with my son? When we've been waiting here for hours. I know. We were able to stabilize him. Bullet entered his chest, exited his back, grazing his spine. He's lost a lot of Is blood. Is he gonna be okay? Can we see him? I'm gonna be honest with you. He has a long road of recovery in front of him. But if he makes it through the night, I'll be more optimistic. But I have to insist for right now, only one of you can come back to visit with him. Only for a few minutes, he needs rest. I'm gonna go, son. Just fine. Only for a few minutes. Okay. All right, follow okay. me. Hello? Hey, Trev, that you? Um, yeah, it's me. Uh, is everything all right? Everything's good. Just called the check-in. Uh, okay, hey, um, EJ just walked in. It's your dad. 
Hey, Dad, what's going on? Everything's good. You guys staying out of trouble up there? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think. Well, what do you mean? Just staying out of trouble. Being a good student, you know. Uh, everything's fine over here. Uh, how's Mom doing? She's doing good. Getting ready to take a vacation pretty soon. Looking forward to seeing you soon. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you too. Is uh, everything all right? You sound a little off. Nothing much. Just wanted to hear your voice. I love you, son. Yeah, I love you too. Hmm. What was that all about? I don't know, man. <sighs> Let's play some pool. Hello, my name is Kent Riley and welcome to The Riley Factor. Tonight we'll be discussing the recent shooting of Andrew Thomas, a black male who was shot by a white police officer in Geffen City, Florida. The story has made national news for obvious reasons, but this is what we know so far. We do know that Andrew Thomas was driving in a vehicle that matched the description of a stolen car. This is the reason they were stopped by the patrolling officers. The officer, whose name is yet to be revealed, got into an argument with the person driving the vehicle. This escalated into a physical fight. That's when Andrew Thomas exited the passenger side and lunged toward the officer. The officer then shot Andrew Thomas, hitting him in the abdomen. Take a look. Here's a photo that was sent to us from an anonymous source. How did they source. get that photo? They probably got it off Drew's social media. It was just a costume party. We went as NWA. Now to me, they cropped everybody else off that photo. Screams Man, they could have got a thousand other pictures to use. Walking toward me. They calling my boy a thug. If they make Drew look like a villain, the public is going to care less about Drew and less about convicting the cop who shot him. This is wrong, Pops. I'm out of here, man. I'd like to start with you. What are your thoughts on this story? Well, first and foremost, the car that the victim's brother was driving was not stolen. It was registered to Andrew Thomas. Second, the car was stopped because officers thought Theo Thomas looked like someone who had stolen a car. And third, neither Andrew nor Theo owns or was carrying a firearm. They were both unarmed. That's all speculation at this point. None of those details have been confirmed. I've spoken to the family. Those boys didn't carry guns. They were musicians. They carried instruments. <laughs> Again, none of those details have been confirmed. Well, since we're so concerned with details being confirmed, did the anonymous sources who gave you that photo also tell you that Andrew Thomas was a decorated member of our armed forces who was deployed for almost a year fighting for this country? Or that before he went to Afghanistan, he was a community leader for years, volunteering at an after-school program? Well, that all sounds great on a resume, but explain Mr. Thomas lunging toward an officer? Explain that. The truth about what really happened will come out eventually. As it always does. I'd like to turn it over to Paige. What are your thoughts on what's unraveling in Geffen? Well, I agree with Tamara in the sense that we do not want to paint an inaccurate picture of Mr. Thomas. But more importantly, I think we should be focusing the conversation on the officer who shall remain nameless, I guess. Why haven't they released his name? How do we have so much information on Mr. Thomas yet nothing on the officers? What was going on through the officer's mind? The Geffen City Police Department has not revealed the name of the officer who shot Mr. Thomas. However, we have discovered who his partner is. Officer Eugene Travis, a 20-year veteran with an exemplary record who has dedicated his life to serving his community. And who's to say the other officer involved didn't have the same record? was stopped because officers thought Theo Thomas looked like someone who had stolen a car. And third, neither Andrew nor Theo owns or was carrying a firearm. 
They were both unarmed. That's all speculation at this point. None of those details have been confirmed. I've spoken to the family. Those boys didn't carry guns. They were musicians. They carried instruments. <laughs> Again, none of those details have been confirmed. Well, since we're so concerned with details being confirmed, That's no good. did the anonymous sources who gave you that photo also we tell get you that ASAP. Andrew Thomas was a decorated member of our armed forces who was deployed for almost a year? Theo, this is Eric. Listen, I know this is probably not the best time to be delivering this news, but we're going to have to hold off on releasing the grant. Just until everything clears up with you and Drew. <laughs> There's been some conflicting reports. We have to protect our brand from any potential bad press. We still believe in you. Our thoughts and our prayers are with you and your family. I'll talk to you soon, right? Why are you following me? Why are you following me? Drew Thomas is my son. I'm trying to find the person who shot him. Hey, you know we can cover for you. You don't have to be here. We have no trace. This is the only place I can find peace. Like, I can't eat, I, I can't sleep. I can't stop thinking about what happened. You know, and besides that, Eric called and said that he's gonna have to hold off on releasing the grant. He said he wants to protect his brand. <laughs> he just, I don't know, man. He just wants to wait till everything dies down. Whatever that means. Everything was going so good. And now I just feel like we're dead in the water, man. What to do? How did you find me? Kent Riley. He had your name and face plaster all over his report for the entire world to see. What do you want from us? I want answers. Who shot my son? People are saying that my son may have had a weapon. My son doesn't even own a weapon. And the media is trying to make him look like a thug. Drew is no thug. He was a good kid. And why won't they release the name of the officer who shot him? The department can't screw this up. They're trying to be cautious. Can't mess this up. My son almost... My son almost died out there. They already messed this up. Before the department releases any information, they're going to try to find anything on your son. They'll use whatever they can find to protect themselves and to protect Officer Tyler. Blue Line's going to protect the Blue Line. Tyler. That's the officer's name? And he's not what you may be thinking he is. He's a good kid. Good kid? 
What good kid shoots an unarmed man? A good kid who got scared and panicked. I could see it in his eyes. He panicked and pulled the trigger. If he could go back in time and take that day back, trust me, he would. He can't take it back. And my son is on life support. Because Officer Tyler panicked? I want to meet him. Look him in his eyes. That's not a good idea. This wasn't a good idea. Then why are you still here talking to me? You know, our son just turned 20. He's a couple years younger than your son. Kind of looks like him, too. Can't imagine what you're going through right now. But if it means anything, I've been praying for him and your family. Thank you. I mean, that means a lot to me. Look, I'll reach out to Officer Tyler. If he wants to speak with you, then I'll arrange a meeting. It'll more than likely have to be at a place he chooses and a time he chooses. I could lose my job and my pension for this. Do you understand what I'm saying? I hear you. No one can know about this. Nice meeting you, Harriet. Officer Eugene. How you feeling? As good as can be expected. Seemed like a good idea a few days ago, but now, I don't know. I gotta tell you, Daniel, I didn't think this was a great idea at first either, but I may have been wrong. It may be good for you to know that Tyler isn't some vigilante cop out here looking for people to shoot. I hope you get what you need from this. Come on, follow me. Tyler, Emma, this is Daniel Thomas. You're the gentleman from the repair shop. This is an odd coincidence. Emma, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You guys know each other? Um, Mr. Thomas runs the repair shop. A few days ago when our car died, he helped me get it towed and repaired. Small world. Uh, Mr. Thomas, this is my husband, Tyler. Mr. Thomas, it's a pleasure to meet you. That's not what I came here for. Mr. Thomas, I would give anything to take back what I did. There's not a day that goes by that I don't regret what happened. It haunts me every day, and it should. Saying sorry won't fix this. It won't turn back time. But sir, I am so sorry for all of it. You have to know, I don't wake up in the morning hating anyone. That's not who I am. Did my son point a weapon at you? There's no gun found. He was unarmed. You all expecting someone else? I'll go check it out. Can I help you? What the hell are you doing here? It's a free country. I'm here visiting a friend. That's exactly what it better be. Where's Tyler? He's over here. You, don't move. When I'm done with Tyler, I'm gonna talk to you. You picked the wrong day. 
You're under arrest for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. You have the right to remain silent. No. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of no. law. No. You have the no. right to you attorney. don't have to hang up on me. Son, 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 calm her down. It's gonna be okay. We're gonna get through this, okay? Take him to the car. Let's go. Man, you need to calm down. You need to calm down and sit down right now. Please. All right, everybody. Today we have a very special guest for our very first dance class. She is one of the best dancers that I have ever had the privilege of watching. So what she's gonna do is she's gonna perform a song to dance, and then she's gonna answer questions on pretty much how to become awesome as a dancer. Does it sound good? Yay! All right, so let's give it up. A very warm welcome to our very own Miss Kenya. a pleasure to be here with such talented young people today. You know, Theo has told me so many great things about you all. And today, I will perform a modern dance inspired by love and hope. like a joke? No, this is real. A hundred percent, I've checked. In the last week or so, we've received almost a million dollars in online donations. Oh my goodness. People must have heard about us on the news. Oh my gosh. Is this all from one person? <laughs> oh my no, goodness. No, no, no. Look, it's, it's small donations. It's 20 and $50 from people all over the country. There's 20 from Jason in Little Rock, 25 from Christy in San Antonio. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. There are donations coming in from other countries. Christmas. This is almost twice as much as we'd have gotten if we'd have gotten that grant. Dude, God made a way. He made a way. Oh my goodness. God, man. He did it. I have a confession to make, little bro. I was about to give up. I was about to let Mom and Dad down, let you down, and let all those kids down. I know this sounds crazy, but I was about to be on that midnight train to Georgia. I thought of you not, not making it out of this. It was just too much. Then Eric pulled the grant, said they had to protect their brand. I just started feeling sorry for myself. I'm sorry for ever thinking like that. I'm sorry for ever losing faith. <laughs> I 
I had a dream the other day, crazy dream. I'll tell you about it later. I want you to know something. That no matter what happens, what we started, we'll continue. That I'm not gonna give up. That we're not gonna give up and that your spot is open. And that we're gonna hold it down until are you ready to get back in there, little bro? I love you, Drew. Today is a dream come true, not only for myself, but for my family, my friends, my colleagues, and the amazing group of kids we get to work with on a daily basis. We get to do what we love to do while simultaneously giving back to the community, the community we grew up in. We feel that is within ourselves to empower our community and to enable our city. This is why the program exists. If we can empower this generation, then this generation can empower the next. For the last six years, we've been working tirelessly to create an after-school program that not only keeps our kids off the streets, but also equips them with practical tools they can use to enhance their lives and the lives of others. This program started with just one class, taught by Theo Thomas. <laughs> we still offer that music class, along with art, dance, voice, physical education, mathematics, English, and creative writing. And we could not have done this without all of you. Thank you to all the volunteers who've been helping keep us afloat, helping us out whenever we were short-staffed. Thanks to the parents who've been trusting us with their kids for all these years. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you, thank you to everyone who donated to this cause. It was overwhelming to see how many people gave, how many people actually cared about this. You know, before I start to ramble on, <laughs> I want to give the mic to the guy who said, we should start an after-school program. My brother, my friend, Drew Thomas. Thank you for that introduction. But I don't want to make this about me. This is about these wonderful kids and this great program that was created for them. This is about investing in the future, the future of our community, because it has to start with us. If we want to see change, we have to make those changes for ourselves. And these kids show up here every day because they want to grow, they want to evolve, and they want to change. And I'm so grateful I still get to be a part of that. I promised myself I wouldn't get too emotional, but like my brother said, this is a dream come true. So, without further ado. Welcome to the new Clear Path After School Program. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's such a pleasure and honor to have you here at the table today to discuss uh, the situation that happened. I really believe that the answers and the solutions that we provide today are literally going to have global implications. The problem that we faced and the thing that we went through is something that is happening all around the world. We're going to get to make a difference. Thank you. Yes, sir. We're really grateful that we can use this for Tyler Garrett, you wanted to meet me? Yes, I wanted to meet you. So I can look you in the eyes, tell you how sorry I am for what happened. I'm sorry for all of it. I look at that day and... Tyler, I've forgiven you a while ago. You know, holding on to that anger and that hate was, it was like a poison to me. And I had to release it. But forgiving you, it, it's not enough. We need to work together, figure out solutions so this, this never happens again. I agree. 
Let's figure this thing out. Let's figure it out. Now is the time to lift our nation from the quicksands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. Now is the time. There will be neither rest nor tranquility in America until the Negro is granted his citizenship rights. The whirlwinds of revolt will continue to shake the foundations of our nation until the bright day of justice emerge. We must not be guilty of wrong for Let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. We must forever conduct our struggle on the high plane of dignity and discipline. We must not allow our creative protest degenerate into physical violence. Again and again, we must rise to the majestic height of leading physical force to soul force. The marvelous new militancy, which has engulfed the Negro community, must not lead us to a distrust of all white people. For many of our white brothers, as evidenced by their presence here today, have come to realize that their destiny is harder with our destiny. Now is the time. Now is the time.